hello everyone welcome to my channel now in this video we are going to discuss the topic electrostatics of conductors now conductors they have we know that conductors are materials which have free electrons okay so conductors they have they have free electrons now free electrons means see these electrons are free to move within the surface of the electron but these electrons are not free to leave the metal surface okay they can they can move on the metal surface surface but they can't leave can't leave the metal but they are not these electrons are not free to leave the metal but they can move within the metal surface now what are the electrostatic properties of the conductors now first property is now for a conductor suppose this is a conductor the electric field inside the conductor will always be zero the electric field inside the conductor is always zero okay now suppose a conductor you have a conductor and the sub conductor is subjected with some external electric field with this which is in this direction this this is the external electric field okay now this conductor it has free electrons so these free electrons will re rearrange themselves so that the resultant electric field inside the conductor is zero so the free electrons will accumulate on this side so if the so this side will develop an excess of negative charge so corresponding to each excess negative charge there will be a positive charge on the other side so that so now this these are the induced charges okay so in a conductor electric field inside the conductor is zero now if you are subjecting the conductor with some external electric field these charges inside the conductors that is the free charge in this case the electrons they will they will rearrange themselves so that they will induce and they will produce an induced electric field in the opposite direction induced electric field due to these induced charges now electric field is always directed from positive charge to negative charge so for this induced charges this electric field is in the opposite direction now this induced electric field will be induced in such a way that the resultant electric field inside the conductor is zero okay so the basic idea is the for a conductor the resultant field inside the conductor is always zero now what is the consequence of this zero electric field inside a conductor okay now from gauss theorem from gauss's theorem we have flux electric flux is equal to integral over closed surface e dot ds is equal to 1 by epsilon times q enclosed q enclosed now as you can see electric field inside a conductor is zero okay now if electric field if electric field this expression is zero so this implies q enclosed is zero q enclosed is zero so that means you can't have any charge any excess charge inside a conductor charge inside a conductor is always zero that we start these free electrons are not inside the conductor they are on the surface okay you can't have any charge inside a conductor solid conductor so inside a conductor so this means inside a conductor electric field is zero charge is also zero okay so these are first two properties now next property is as we have seen if any charge is there it free charge is there it, it will be on the surface of the conductor so what will be the value of the electric field associated with this charge distribution now suppose there is a conductor and uh, it has charge on the surface suppose sigma is the surface charge density sigma is the surface charge 
density sigma is the surface charge density what do you mean by surface charge density surface charge density is charge per unit area charge per unit area okay now let's say we need to find the electric field at this particular region corresponding to this surface charge density so let us draw a gaussian surface okay now this side we need not calculate the flux because here already we know that electric field intensity is zero now in this direction suppose electric field is e corresponding to this area this is the area vector delta s okay so if i apply gauss theorem so phi phi is equal to e integral over closed surface e ds e and d actually it is e dot ds but since e and ds they are in the same direction i am writing e ds so that is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times charge on this portion of the area sigma is the surface charge density area is this so this is sigma delta s okay so this implies e is equal to sigma by epsilon naught epsilon naught so this is the expression for electric field intensity near the surface of a charge conductor having surface charge density sigma okay so that means electric field is discontinuous across the surface see electric field is zero at the center electric field is zero at this particular point electric field is zero at this particular point. so electric field is zero till just before the surface and as you cross the surface the electric field intensity value becomes sigma by epsilon naught okay so that means we can say that electric field changes discontinuously at the surface okay we can say that electric field electric field changes discontinuously at the surface at the surface just before the surface electric field intensity is zero and as you cross the surface the electric field intensity becomes sigma by epsilon naught okay so next point is the electric field intensity is perpendicular to the surface of a charge conductor now uh, what is the reason behind this see uh, suppose this is the surface of a charge conductor now it has some charges okay it has some charges okay suppose sigma is the surface charge density now these charges are under electrostatic condition okay so suppose now we are saying that electric field intensity is perpendicular to the surface of a charge conductor suppose it is not so suppose electric field is in this direction and it is at angle theta to the theta to the direction of the surface okay so if this is e this is theta so electric field intensity will have a component e cos theta along the surface along the surface where you have charges with surface charge density sigma now if electric field intensity has a component along the surface that means the charges which are on the surface of the conductor they will experience a force along the surface due to this component of electric field so that means these charges will be no longer in electrostatic condition they will start moving but which is not possible charge can't move on its own we know that under electrostatic condition these charges are at rest so that means there can't be any component of electric field intensity along the surface of a conductor charge conductor so that means e cos theta this is zero so if e cos theta is zero that means cos theta is zero so that means theta is 90 degree so that means electric field in suppose you have a charge conductor having charge density sigma electric field intensity will always be perpendicular to the surface of a charge conductor so we can conclude that electric field intensity and electric field lines are always perpendicular to the surface of a charge conductor electric field lines electric field 
is in the direction electric field is always in the direction of the electric field lines so in addition to electric field we say that electric field both electric field and electric field lines are perpendicular to the surface of a charge conductor okay Achha. now another feature which comes from this property is see we know that the relation between electric field and electric potential it is e is equal to minus dv by dr okay so that gives dv is equal to minus e dr now see potential is a scalar quantity this is a vector quantity this is a vector quantity so okay now how will you multiply the two vector quantities so that you get a scalar quantity you have to you need to take the dot product so this is minus e dot dr is equal to dv okay now as we have seen electric field intensity is perpendicular to the surface so that means this quantity is zero so if this quantity is zero this implies dv is equal to zero or v is equal to constant so the surface of a charge conductor is having equal potential at all points on the surface so the surface is equipotential surface of a charge conductor is equipotential equal to equipotential so equipotential what is the equipotential surface it is a surface having equal potential at all points on the surface okay now suppose this is a conductor and where does the charges exist on the surface so this is a conductor of radius r okay now on the surface the potential is 1 by 4 pi epsilon if q is the charge r is the radius so on the surface potential is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r okay inside electric field is zero e in is zero okay now e in it is equal to minus dv by dr so e dv in by dr okay so that means dv in means potential inside e in means electric field inside so since electric field inside is zero that does not mean potential inside is zero that means potential inside is constant potential on the surface was also constant okay potential inside is also constant and what is its value potential on the surface it is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r potential inside also it is so that means potential throughout this region on the surface as well as inside the potential is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r v in is equal to v surface is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q by r okay so this is the potential so therefore see potential difference potential difference on the surface and potential difference inside this conductor charge conductor it is zero so whether you are finding potential difference inside the conductor or on the surface of the conductor the potential difference will always be zero why because potential is same whether it is inside or it is on the surface of a conductor okay so next feature of the electrostatics of conductors that we are going to see is electrostatic shielding electrostatic shielding see we have seen that if you have a conductor with the cavity okay now whether you introduce a charge inside this conductor or you subject this conductor with this external electric field the this cavity inside the cavity the electric field will always be zero okay now suppose either this conductor this side you are having positive charge this side negative charge whatever with the charge distribution okay now if the positive charge if it is positive charge electric field intensity will be normal to the surface directed away if it is negative charge electric field intensity again it will be normal to the surface okay but this time it is since it is negative charge so the direction will be towards the surface 
okay so whatever may be the charge distribution okay the electric field intensity on the surface it will be normal to the surface either normal inward or normal outward depending upon whether the charge is positive or negative but inside this cavity the inside the cavity in the conductor the electric field intensity will always be zero and uh, the potential v inside it will always be a constant okay now this zero electric field inside a conductor this property is called electrostatic shielding okay so you may write this definition of electrostatic shielding as for any charge or electric field configuration any cavity inside a conductor remains shielded from outside electric influence and the field inside the cavity is always zero this is called electrostatic shielding okay this is called electrostatic shielding so this is another feature of electrostatics of conductor now next feature is like suppose you have a conductor two conductor conductor one this conductor two this is of radius r1 this is of radius r2 this conductor is positively charged and has charge q1 and this conductor has i was again say this is also positively charged but this has charge q2 okay this is q2 this is q1 radius r1 and r2 now potential for this is v is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 by r1 for this potential is this is v1 so this potential for the second conductor is v2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not u2 by r2 okay so now if the two conductors are brought in contact in direct contact or indirect contact that means a connecting conducting wire is connected across the two conductors okay both the situations are identical either you bring the two conductors in contact physical contact or you connect them through a conducting wire both the situations are identical in the sense that as a result of this step both the conductors will acquire equal potential so v1 will be equal to v2 so the potentials will be equal provided either these two conductors are brought in contact direct contact or a connecting wire is connected across the two conductors so if v1 is equal to v2 this implies 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 by r1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q2 by r2 so this implies q1 by r1 is equal to q2 by r2 okay so this can be written as q1 by q2 is equal to r1 by r2 so charge is proportional to the radius so that means if the radius is identical both the conductors are identical in size so in that case the charge on the two conductors will also be equal but initially they had unequal charges q1 and q2 so if they are brought in contact and either direct contact or a connecting wire is connected across the two and then the contact is removed then the contact is removed the charge will be equally distributed if they have same radius the charge will be equally distributed so how it will be distributed see total charge is q1 plus q2 so if the, they have equal size then this charge will be divided equally among the two conductors so each of the spheres will get charge q1 by q2 by 2 so this sphere will have charge q1 plus q2 by 2 this will also get charge q1 plus q2 by 2 okay so this is distribution of charges when two charge spheres are brought in contact so these are few of the features related to electrostatics of conductors there are few more things like uh, potential calculation of potential for concentric spheres those things we, i will discuss in the next video i hope this video will serve the purpose for the students who are preparing for cbc or any other state board which uh, examination and also students who are aiming for je and neat so good luck for your preparation